gig, gig. It's gig. We all know who he is. He has 3.6 million. I don't need to tell you. Summer 2024 anime in a nutshell. Have fun with that. <laughs> oh, hi, you, my little knee chan. Your cute little sister is waking you up with love what and the fuck are you doing? Right, go right, go right, go are you exhausted from me saying at the beginning of every one of these videos how many new high profile shows are coming out? Well, welcome to summer 2024 anime where we have romance anime, including Sussy Sisters. Romance anime with Sussy Sisters. And my editor doing the trademark scroll of the seasonal charts. Okay, we're scrolling. We're, 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 we're still scrolling. Oh, look at this scrolling. Is that some Sussy Sisters I see? So I'm not going to take up your time. You know the drill by now. It's a summer anime video, so enough waiting. Let's just bloody jump right into it. Any... Any second now. She's dead, isn't she? Guys, I'm sure over here, I'm guessing you like watching anime. What? How did you know? So shouldn't you be able to watch as many titles as you can as painlessly as possible? Well, with today's sponsor, ExpressVPN, you can do exactly that. With ExpressVPN, you can unlock tons of anime because you can choose wherever in the world you want to be to unlock the entire library for that country. Here in Japan, we have a ton of anime that aren't available elsewhere in the world, like Apothecary Diaries, for example. But on my end, sometimes I want to make use of my Crunchyroll account if I'm not feeling to Nihongo Jozu, but it's completely blocked here in Japan. So if I want to watch some good old-fashioned subtitled anime, with just one click, I can swap myself over to America and the entire Crunchyroll library is available for me. But it's not just Crunchyroll, I can also get access to tons of region lock content on other streaming services like Netflix, which is one of my all-time favorite anime, Your Name. But if I want to watch it with subtitles, I have to switch myself over to Singapore. The fact that it works on all my devices, phone, TV, computer, makes it effortless to catch all the anime I want to watch whenever I want. With a single tap of the button, it's incredibly easy to use and with just one subscription, I can connect up to eight of my devices. So, what are you waiting for? Click that link in the description or go to expressvpn.com slash giguk2024 to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Yes, free. Thank you very much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get on with summer 2024. Gamers. Fuck! Okay, stop me if this sounds vaguely familiar. Short, muscular boy donning a black cloak who can't use magic in a world dominated by magic enters a magic academy aiming to be the top magic person in this magic world, gets ridiculed but is actually super strong taking down everything with his brute strength and big sword. Hold up. I would start filing the DMCA claim myself if the show didn't go so goddamn hard. This is Wistoria, an anime coming from the director of Black Clover, could you tell? And the writer of Danmachi, could you tell? And the character designer of Cross Age, could you tell? It's a premise we've seen before, following a formula that's oh so familiar, but presented in a shiny new package that looks absolutely phenomenal. Episode 1 hits you with this heart-pounding, jaw-dropping action scene, with the director seemingly taking all the lessons learned from working on Black Clover and refining it to the highest degree, then continues to deliver in the very next episode. On a is that really start true? Is the director from Black Clover really directing this? this are you fucking serious that must be grounds to some bullshit i i don't know i would be annoyed I, I, if i was uh the art if i was the uh the creative black clover i'll feel some type of way that shit will bother the fuck out of me i don't know that'll that'll make me mad standpoint we're starting the season off with a bang because i don't know if any other show is gonna look as good as this th okay guys i gotta get serious for a bit now, I know you can see the title of this show, and I'm very aware of what kind of taste you think I have, but just listen to me when I Rise say Samra. with zero irony Black that Clover this, animation. Animation. this show is legit. Hmm. No, no, guys, hear me out. It isn't a meme. I'm being serious this time. It isn't what you think. Just give me a I know, I know. With the title like Days With My Stepsister, I too was expecting this to be the next trash field dumpster fire being the spiritual successor of Domestic Girlfriend, but this somehow is a 100% serious, thought-provoking, somber drama with no cliches, fan service, pandering, or anything you'd expect from a romance story between 
Step siblings. I know you're thinking, step sibling romance without the spice? That's about as useful as fapping to get pregnant. But honestly, this looks like. <laughs> okay, you probably weren't thinking that. But this honestly looks like they are trying to tell a grounded story about two people later in their lives meeting in awkward circumstances and the realistic drama that would surround it. It's beautifully shot, atmospheric, taking its time with songs that speak right to the heart. This shit is the Dune 2 of incest. This is, unironically, a really promising looking drama, and I swear to God, it's not because it has a sister in it. All right, what's next? Oh, hi, you, my Oni-chan. Okay, guys, listen to me when I say with zero irony, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. This anime's appeal is pretty simple to understand, you know, it's one of those cute little romance anime I'm comfortably watching on the living room sofa. Looks pretty wholesome and innocent, then my dad walks in, sees this shit plastered on screen and goes, GONE! <laughs> Scooch over, son. Let your dad watch too. This time we have a girl who flirts with the guy, but the catch is she does the flirting in Russian. But wait, the twist is he secretly understands her because he also knows Russian for some, some inexplicable reason. Uh, uh I don't know. I never counted. I am not really a math guy, you know? I'm just waiting for the episode where he reveals that he understood her the entire time and the episode title is just Clueless Japanese Guy Surprises Foreign Girl with Perfect Russian. Normally I've gotten tired of these kinds of shows now, but I think I'm gonna give this one a chance and you might be wondering why. <laughs> No, Dokokobo are just so good at what they do, they might as well be giving insulin shots with everything they make now. <laughs> it's not because of the little sister character! It has been a while though, since the season hasn't been completely dominated by high profile sequels, but there are still a few. Tower of God is back, My Hero Academia is still airing, along with more Shy Hero Academia starring Bocce the Rocket. More near a tomato. Hopefully the hype for this season remains and it doesn't get plagued with production issues. Fairy tale 100 year quest? Who's asking for more fairy tale in 2024? <laughs> Holy you know, crap! I think what they have been a bit dull. Their fans have had it wrong. <laughs> Okay. You know, I think we may have been a bit too harsh on Fairy Tale. Their fans have had it rough recently, and you know, every anime has its positive points. Monogatari's back to show all these modern anime how it's done. See, unlike all the other anime this season, Monogatari has historically depicted a more normal sibling relationship. All right, grab the kid. Grab, go, 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 grab, grab, grab. Come on, you gotta go. Just, just get. It's, it's a kid. Go, go, guys, guys. Just. I got him. Ah, oh, dude, what the fuck? You got him, my arm. There was a miss input. Miss input. Calm down. You calm the fuck down! Cloverworks continue to prove that whether or not they mess up an adaptation, at the very least, everything they touch looks absolutely godlike. I thought Wistoria would far and beyond be the best looking anime this summer, but the sheer creativity in some of these storyboards, the amazing direction, casual art style switch up, and the pure animation eye candy might just put it a step above. Having said that, I'm a bit confused as to what kind of tone we're going for here. Some dude gets diced up to a pile of bloody cubes, a whole village is massacred, a fucking kid gets beheaded, it has some of the most grueling, gruesome imagery you can find all season, then it hits you with a This is like a shonen anime taking place during the Red Wedding, but credit to Cloverworks for being able to get this much attention worldwide. This is meant to be set during a real historical time period in Japan, and it's stuff like this that can get an international audience interested in your history. I wonder what the Japanese audience thinks of this. That's enough history lessons for today. Alright. We gotta switch things up. Usamu Dazai has one of the most tragic stories in Japanese history. As one of Japan's most famous novelists, Dazai experienced the darkness few humans have ever encountered, leading him to attempt to take his life not once, twice, but four times to which fate denied him and forced him to continue living his torturous life. Eventually, he would put his broken soul into the novel, No Longer Human, one of the most harrowing pieces of media to ever be created before he would eventually be able to successfully take his own life, finally fulfilling his wish of being left alone and finally given the grace of death. Anyway, here he is in a wacky isekai. Yep, we got a silly comedy about a depressed author who wants to off himself in another world, chomping pills like it's a mukbang video and charming goddesses with his <clears throat> suicide rears. God, that line made me want to Osamu does I myself. This is the first <laughs> so time every e boy on VR chat. Got it. <laughs> is taking creative liberties with the historical figures, but it does make you wonder is there anything they won't put in an isekai? Yep. 
Don't adjust your screens, this is really happening. When I first saw this get announced, I had to double check that the date wasn't April 1st. This is an idea you'd expect for some wild right, fan fiction, right, but I think Warner Brothers uh -huh. realized all uh -huh. they needed to do was to give us anime Harley Quinn, then look us weebs dead in the eye and go... <laughs> I knew you would come. All in all, this seems like just a fun, don't take too seriously type of show, giving us exactly what we'd expect. The Suicide Squad having a romp in an Isekai fantasy world. But I'm not sure if I was expecting a bit more coming from the writer of ReZero and animated by Studio Wit. A studio that has historically put out banger after banger. Because I'm not sure if there's anything else taking their focus. What? The actual... But Hello my dear friends, today I want to do a class presentation about everyone's favourite animal, deers. Here are some fun deer facts. They can run up to 30 miles per hour. All male deers grow antlers. They have an avid aversion towards anyone named Connor. Deers are actually majestic creatures. Let's have a look at some of these magnificent animals in action. Deers can be found across the world, including countries like England, Japan, America, Politer America, the North Pole, and of course, Narnia. There are over 40 species of deer, such as the Red Deer, the Reindeer, the Dead Deer, the Australian Jump Deer, or as the locals call it, Jumpos, and of course, Deer the Rock Johnson. Here's a fun deer joke. What do you call a deer with no eyes? blind. That concludes today's presentation. I hope we all learned a little bit more about deers today, because I have no idea what the fuck this show is about. I parry everything. Now this is a fantasy action about a man who parries everything. He parries swords, he parries a staff, he parries a goddamn cow. What? Holy shit, he buried his virginity! This is pretty much what the title says it is. An anime tailor made for you Sekiro fans out there. It's an anime tailor made for you Street Fighter 3 Third Strike fans out there. And it's nice to see a protagonist who doesn't look like the same beta soy boy for once. I just want to see how far they can take this concept. Can he parry a gun? Can he parry a nuke? Can he parry my invasive thoughts? Oh ho ho, you can parry everything, huh? Well, parry this. You're a talentless hack, you'll never achieve anything in life, and you're old. I had sexual relations with your mother. Elsewhere in fantasy, Plus Size Elf is here to undo all the good the Dumbbell Show has done for Weaves, with the series giving us some American representation in the only way anime knows how. Wow. That's right. Blonde girls. If you're a fan of cake, I don't think you're ready, because respectfully, this anime doesn't have cake. It's the entire fucking baking industry. We got Onis, we got Dark Elves, we got Marseille after season three of Dungeon Meshi. Failure Frame is your pick if you want some dumb, edgy fun. This one was a niche concept, but I actually enjoyed it. You have a girl who is basically engineering her own magic tools in a fantasy backdrop, and I was honestly impressed. You truly do feel like you're in a made-up fantasy world because they actually made engineering look fun. We're gonna play some power fantasy that is no different from your generic OP main character in a fantasy world, except this time the protagonist is in his 30s, and I feel offended that this is a representation they think 30-year-olds want. You wanna give us a power fantasy? Give us a Mildly exciting new kitchen appliance. The ability to stay up past 2 a.m. Hell, wake me up when there's a protagonist who doesn't get a life-altering injury because he slept funny one night. First, there was anime. Then came fictional idols in anime avatars. Then came real-life idols in anime avatars. Now, I present to you... Fictional anime about fictional idols playing real-life idols in anime avatars! <laughs> For the first time, anime has actually given us a VTuber anime that accurately depicts the culture and content, to the point where even I was surprised. Real-looking live 2D models using OBS as a streaming software, they play actual stream games like Getting Over It and of course going live on you. Our tube? Anime has been screaming for a true to life depiction of VTubers, but I gotta wonder how accurate it is to have a drunk VTuber who just shouts obscenity on the street. Huh? I like to eat ass. 
You know, for once, we have a season not dominated by isekai or fantasy because romance seems to be going through a bloody second renaissance this summer. Senpai's and Otokonoko is a cute little romance where a girl confesses to a female crush only to find out that they're actually a boy. <laughs> This is just the Stolfo fans coming to terms with their sexuality. My wife has no emotions, aka man gets dumped and immediately goes to fuck his toaster. I get that this is meant to be a cute and innocent little series about a guy falling for his robot housewife appliance, but dude, seeing this guy awkwardly attempt to chat up his toaster gave me shades of the same energy as watching a grown up Kazuya from Rent a Girlfriend. <laughs> Bro is being a certified smegma male. Another sister romance anime? Wait, no. False alarm. It's just a romance with two girls who are sisters. <laughs> Look at that anime. No sweet home Alabama this time. This one actually has the most accurate sibling relationship because it's about two twin sisters taking it turns going, Mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. But you know, instead of playing Call of Duty, they're playing Halo Reach for My Peach with their childhood friend. Two player co op. I would have picked Call of Duty. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> hey, little peach with my, hey, little reach with my peach. <laughs> of your harem anime, we have a girl who is the harem. She can be a tsundere, kudere, dandere, little sister. Onita. Yeah, add that one to the list. Introducing anime's very first Omnidere. This is just the girlfriend version of those knockoff game cartridges that promise 100 games in one. I was wondering where harem anime could go after one man finding 100 right, girlfriends. Sorry, who knew that the next Don't step was just 100 me, girlfriends yeah. in one? Wait a minute. This is just weaponized schizophrenia. The proper etiquette when conversing with girls. A guide by 2.5D Seduction. Wait, you're telling me a 2D obsessed, unsociable hentai addicted weeb starts an anime club by himself, and the only person who joins is a cute, attractive girl whose only interest is cosplaying his favorite character right before a hot superstar model transfers over, who's actually his childhood friend that's had a crush on him for years, and all they want to do is get him to take pictures of them cosplaying as hot, cultured anime characters? And you motherfuckers tell me Isekai is the power fantasy genre. From the creator of Hyoka, we've got another mystery detective series that is certainly a treat for the eyes. It might not be Kyoto animation, but this still looks bloody beautiful. The background, the atmosphere, the directing. This looks gorge- Wait a minute. Oh, they're not siblings! Mm. We're finally safe, boys! All this right. is a different kind of detective story. There are no high-stakes mysteries to solve, no murder to uncover. It's about solving the little mysteries you find in everyday life. They have a full 10-minute Sherlock Holmes breakdown about how this guy makes his hot chocolates. This is like if Makoto Shinkai adapted a Reddit thread from r slash mildly interesting, but somehow it keeps you engaged all the way through. It's about getting you invested in something inconsequential, finding something interesting in the mundane, and it really shows how these people really yeah, need to find a fucking hobby as soon as possible. <laughs> You'd be in an isekai then, mate. This season has been a no holds bar free for all for romance, but even with all the choice on hands, there was still one that impressed me the most. Too Many Losing Heroines shows a guy accidentally witnessing a short, blue haired anime girl getting last place in her own romance anime, like, uh. All of them. And through that, forms an unlikely friendship before unwittingly becoming the center to a bunch of other girls who have all been the rem to their rivals Amelia, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. If romance anime were Evo, this shit is the loser's bracket. This is one of those shows that is self-aware enough to poke fun at all the cliches that plague the romance genre, but doing it in a way that clearly celebrates everything that it's taken inspiration from. It gives you some great character writing, organic banter and jokes, but isn't shy about hitting you with these emotional scenes in between all that. Oh, and did I mention the production? This anime just seems to be teeming with passion. Just look at the ending. They had to experiment with new dollies and camera rigs, combining live action shots with real cell animation to get this cool aesthetic. All this effort for something 90% of you are probably going to skip anyway, but that's how you know they give a shit. And it looks like the team have taken that same passion and put it in the rest of the anime because it looks fantastic. Out of all the romance anime, this had the strongest premiere and is one of the shows I'm going to be keeping a close eye on because it's just... <laughs> 
Look, I don't know what is up with all the sussy sisters this season, but I swear my mum's life, this is not the reason I'm praising them. We just have a whole season where some of the most popular or beautifully crafted shows have this little sister in them who seems way too enthusiastic about their brother, okay? Look, there are other animes you could watch. I mean, what else is hot this season? Nobody say a word. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this All month right. too. Author Curtis Eckstein, Basil. All right, that was a uh, gig luck, gig luck, gig. That was gig. Like, subscribe, share, follow, and comment. Who guys didn't like this and all that great stuff? I'll see you guys in the next one and all that great stuff. Um, I'm gonna call it a night for now. This, I'm gonna finish the rest of this after the stream because this will be pretty much ready to go. Um, I thought I was gonna get this done within the time, but I guess not because well. This is usually the boring process other than just making it. Um, so um, I'll let you guys go. Have a great night, guys. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. All that great stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.